Today I'm going to show you how to turn your 3D printer into a 2D printer. It's fun, fast and easy and your printer will be able to create its own masterpieces. Did you know that you can use your 3D printer as a 2D plotter by simply attaching a pen? Don't be fooled by the length of this video. It's mostly one-off setup work. This is a really, really easy thing to do and a really cool novelty and I recommend giving it a try. Now the content for this video doesn't come from me. It comes from one of my patrons, Remco Breen. He posted up on my Patreon page, this project that he'd been working on. I took one look and had to have a go. Fortunately, Remco also made a Thingiverse link with a guide that we'll be following today. The only technical thing is that you need to have G2 and G3 Arc support enabled in Marlin, but unless you've turned it off to save space, it will already be enabled by default, so you're ready to proceed. Now I've had plenty of successes and even more failures, so hopefully I can build on Remco's fine work and make this easy for you to follow, starting with fitting the physical parts. First things first, you need a pen that you can click to retract and extend. Now for the paper, you can try clips, but I found by far the easiest way is just to use a tiny little bit of masking tape. You need so little because there's so little pressure on the paper. Just a little bit into opposite corners proved sufficient for me and it never came loose. Now originally I tried to use solely rubber bands to hold the pen to the X carriage but as you can see it was far too wobbly. Look how much it flexes back and forth as it draws and the end result of course is very inaccurate from this. A cool effect but not really what we're aiming for. I tried Remco's mount, it was still a little bit floppy for me, maybe I needed more rubber bands, so I thought I would design my own. My first version identified that the pen needed to be able to flex up and down, but it still had too much side to side travel. Therefore, version 2 fixed things by having a much closer channel for the pen and using a single loom band wrapped around to hold it tightly, allow that up and down motion, but zero side to side wobble. I again tried to cut corners by simply using rubber bands to mount it to my printer, but once again, as it was printing, it flexed around way too much. Therefore, I broke out the cable tires, as this is how I originally designed the mount, and I cable tied it onto my printer. This is what I started to get much better results. I recommend setting the height of the pen so when it's protruding, it sticks just past the nozzle, and I would also recommend measuring the offset. I measured 35 to the left and 35 to the front, Make sure to measure yours because it will be different. The link for Remco's Creality mount is in the description as well as the link to my universal mount. Anyway, let's proceed with software, starting with download and installation. We need to download three things here. The first is Inkscape. It's a free vector graphics program that's an equivalent to Adobe Illustrator, link in the description. And now we have two plugins or extensions. They're also linked below. Download the zip file from GitHub and download the zip by clicking on the download links on the Phototonics website. After you install Inkscape, it's gonna be on your hard drive, probably in C, Program Files, Inkscape. And you're gonna go to this folder and you're gonna scroll down to the bottom until you see a folder called Share. After you double click that, you're going to see two folders, palettes and extensions, and that's where we're going to install our plugins. So you can see I have the JTP laser tool open here, and there is a set of files with .inx and .py on the end. I'm going to copy those. I'm going to come inside extensions, and then I'm going to paste. It's going to ask to replace two files. That is fine. You can say yes to that, and you're probably going to need administrator privileges to do so. Second plugin is from KM Laser, and you can see there's an extensions folder. So we take the files from inside that, and once again, we copy them over to the extensions folder of Inkscape. But we see there's a second folder called palettes, so we'll open that, and then we'll go up one in our Inkscape directory, find palettes, and copy over this file as well. That's it, our plugins are all installed. If you have Inkscape open, it's time to reopen it to load the plugins. Okay, here we are in Inkscape, and as you can see, there's a myriad of buttons, most of which you won't need to know for this. But it is a free version of Illustrator effectively, and that means it does vector graphics. If we look at this lovely picture of Chuck Norris on the left, we'll see that if we zoom in far enough, that it's made up of pixels. And those, of course, are the little squares of color that form in a grid to create an image. 
If we go to the one on the right hand side, however, and zoom in the same, we'll see that no matter how far we go in, it will never pixelate. And that's because it's drawn with a mathematical formula. And that formula is what our printer will use to plot around with a pen on the X and Y axis. If you want to know if something is a vector in Inkscape, you simply select it and then double click on it. And then you should have all of these little handles come up. You can actually use these to edit the shape if you like but it's a telltale sign that what you have is ready to be cut on a laser cutter or drawn on a 3D printer with a pen. A couple of tips to get you going, plus and minus on the keyboard will zoom in and out. And if you hold down the space bar and then move the mouse without clicking anything, you'll be able to pan the camera. One other great shortcut is pressing five to fit the page. So we can see up the top there's an extensions folder and if we click on that, we'll notice some G-code tools and they're installed by default. And as Remco Breen says in his post, they are a massive can of worms. I've looked into them and I agree with him completely. Don't bother with them. There's a far easier way that he laid out that I'm gonna show you in this video. The ones that we installed were KM Laser and we're gonna use that later on to fill in our areas with Hatch. And the other one we installed was Generate Laser G-Code and that takes us to the JTEC Phototonics Laser Tool. Our software is all set up, so we're ready to proceed with the simplest example, which is of course, a hollow world. We're ready to create some vector graphics and to do some drawing on our 3D printer. So let's start with the simplest of examples, and that is hollow world. We're gonna to come to the text tool, click in the middle of the page, and then type it in. Afterwards, we can resize it by dragging from the corners. And if we hold the control key on the keyboard, it's gonna lock in that aspect ratio and retain our proportions. Let's do our vector test. If we double click on this, it edits the text and therefore they're not vectors ready to cut. To change that, we need to come up to the path and then say object to path. Now, when we double click on any of these letters, we can see that all of our little handles come up and we know we're dealing with vectors. Now by default, the 3D printer or a laser cutter for that matter, will only do the outlines. And if we want to preview what that looks like, we'll drag a box around it and then it will turn the fill off and turn the stroke on. And that gives us an outline and that's exactly what's going to be drawn. Keeping it selected, it's time to come up to our extensions and we're going to come to generate laser G-code, JTEC Phototonics laser tool, and this dialog box will come up. You should be able to pretty much copy exactly what I have here. It should work for almost any printer. Of course, the directory is going to be different for you. Normally a laser cutter would have some sort of specific G code for turning a laser on and off. But for us, we're gonna lift up or lower a pen. So when the laser is on, we're gonna lower the pen down to 0.5 millimeters above the bed. That should have just enough clearance for the nozzle not to scrape. And when the laser is off, we're gonna lift the pen up so it's no longer drawing. And that means moving it up to Z 5.5 we should have the pen in midair ready to move to the new place to draw without leaving a mark behind. Now the travel speed and the laser speed you can have pretty fast. Remember we're not extruding any plastic so we can whip around the page fairly quickly. Laser power is irrelevant. The power on delay should stay at zero, one pass with a depth of one millimeters. Now I've set this to my desktop and I haven't really bothered with the file name but make sure you have this one ticked. And apart from that, we're ready to hit apply. If we zoom in on this, all these arrows are gonna tell us which way the pathway is going for our G-code. There is one other thing of note, which has been overlaid here. Don't worry, this will not be cut. These are guidelines to tell us where in relation to the bottom corner of the printer that this is going to be drawn. And we can adjust this position and hit apply as many times as we need to update the G-code. Now, if you remember, we measured the offset of our pen from the nozzle of our printer, and here's where we're gonna enter that information to get everything spaced correctly. We're gonna to come to the text tool, and on my Mark III, I measured this at 35 to the left, so that's what I'm gonna type in. I also measured 35 in the Y direction, so I'm gonna update that there. Now this was zero, and we added 35, so we'll do the same. I'll make 100, 135, and I'll add 35 here as well, and this bit is ready to go. Now I'm gonna click on my G-code and press delete, and then highlight my letters and move them fairly close to the corner. Doesn't matter if it overlaps with this other guide text. And with it selected, I'm gonna hit apply once more. So on my desktop now, I should expect an output .g code file. So let's check for that. You can see that every time I hit apply, it makes a new one. So let's right click and have a look inside it with Notepad++. 
and we can see that we have G code just like you would expect on any other printer. Please note that it is outputting G2 and G3 Arc G code. So like I said at the start, you need to have that enabled in the firmware if you expect it to draw the picture. Now there's one other problem here before we send this to the printer, and that's that there's not really any start G code besides setting the units. There's no home or anything like that to help the printer find its place or to lift up so you can click on the back of the pen to activate it. Now one option is to manually add in the G code every time you generate it, but I imagine that's gonna be tiresome pretty quick. So I'd love to show you a shorter way that you only have to do once and will remain persistent every other time you do this. So we're actually back in the extensions folder where we unzipped those two plugins and we're gonna come down to the one that says laser.py and we're gonna open that in a text editor. If we scroll down, we'll see that there's a section for a header and a footer and they're largely empty. If you come down to my video description, I'm gonna have some text to copy and paste in that I recommend. I'm gonna do that now and then talk you through it. So I've pasted in over the top. We have G28 to home. We set our units and then we lift up 20 millimeters above the bed and then it counts down 10 seconds on the LCD and that comes from Remco Breen. That's a really smart way of giving you a 10 second window to walk over and click down the pen so it's sticking out just past the nozzle. Now he does note that if your 3D printer has the part cooling fan come on at the same time as the mainboard cooling fan, you might want to insert G-code for that to keep the mainboard cool while you are printing and he has that in his Thingiverse link. In the description there's also some NG code to go in the footer, so let's paste that in and explain that as well. So in our footer we tell it to lift up 20 millimeters again just to make sure the pen is clear and then we tell it to home and then the last thing we do is disable the stepper motors so we can freely move the printer around to take off the paper and our completed drawing. We need to come up and save this then we need to close and reopen Inkscape for the final time and we're ready to make our G-code once again and send it through to our 3D printer. So I've just retraced my steps, set everything up and generated the G-code again. Let's examine the file this time around. So we can see that the start G-code that we put into the configuration file has been included and if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, our NG code is there as well, which means we're ready to print. The final step that I would recommend is previewing your G-code file in either Pronterface or Simplify 3D. And to do that in Simplify 3D, we simply drag it on and we can verify that it's going to fit on the printer platform. Why is this gap here? Well, remember that's where the nozzle thinks it is, but the pen is actually offset 35, 35 this way in my case. So it's actually gonna draw in the corner like what we saw on Inkscape. If you're not seeing anything in Simplify 3D, make sure you have travel moves ticked. In Pronterface, you simply go open G-code and it will preview as you would expect. So I'm running Octoprint, so I've uploaded to my SD card and hit go. The Mark III is going through its usual homing procedure. You can see I have the pen tip retracted and then it comes to the corner after homing, lifts up that 20 millimeters and now is when I can click on the button to put the pen down ready to draw. This means that the pen tip is now sticking out a couple of millimeters lower than the nozzle, which means when it comes down to a height of 0.5, as we told it for laser on, the pen comes in contact, and when it lifts up to 5.5, the pen is clear and can move without leaving a streak to the next part of the drawing. You can see that it's a pretty fast process with the speeds that we input, and it's doing a pretty neat job apart from the D where the pen must have slipped. Our system is working perfectly because the pen is free to slide up and down whenever it wants, but it doesn't wobble side to side, introducing inaccuracies. When the drawing is done, it lifts up and homes, turns off the stepper motors, therefore we can pull out the bed and remove our drawing. We've got the basics out of the way, so hopefully you're ready for something cooler like the Mona Lisa or a portrait of Chuck Norris. We're back in Inkscape and we're gonna look at how I did some of those other examples that I showed you at the start of the video. Apart from using the inbuilt tools to create your own geometry, you can also import existing vectors really easily. That includes things like SVGs, or in my case, an Illustrator file to make my TT logo with a Sharpie. Probably what you really wanna know is how to convert a JPEG into a vector. And for that, I'm gonna use my old standby Chuck Norris. Now we know that if we zoom in here, it's made of pixels, therefore the printer can't reproduce it by tracing. Fortunately, there's an easy workflow built into Inkscape and that is accessed by coming up to Path, Trace Bitmap. Now I'd recommend ticking Live Preview here and then playing with the different settings. 
we have numbers to raise and lower to get our right amount of contrast in and we have multiple versions that we can use as well to get the desired effect. I'm going to keep it on the default and then I'm going to click OK. I can now close this and move away the original image to the side and we have our vector left behind. There's only one problem. It will do the outline as we know but it won't fill in this black. We're going to turn off our feel on, on our stroke and this is a realistic preview of what will actually be reproduced by our 3D printer. To get a fill, we're going to use the other plugin that Remco found and we access that by selecting our vector, coming up to extensions, KM laser and going to generate hatch fill. Now this plugin is going to turn any solid areas into diagonal lines and there's only a couple of things on this dialog box you need to be aware of. The hatch spacing is how far in between the lines they are, basically how dense it is. The hatch angle is the angle of the diagonals and crosshatch adds a second set of diagonals going back the other way, essentially making it twice as thick. I'm happy with these settings, so I'm going to click apply and after a few seconds, the hatch is generated on the inside. I can close this, zoom in and see that now it's going to be filled in nicely by the pen to create our picture. Now by default, it's going to lock the old and the new together. If you want to delete one, for instance, the outline and only do the fill, you need to right click and then go to ungroup. This will give us the opportunity to separate them, deleting this outside one if you don't want it and simply cutting the inside in its place. Using the combination of tools I've showed you in this video, you should be able to draw your own geometry. You should be able to import existing vectors and you should be able to convert raster images like JPEGs. The final step is always the same and that involves coming up to extensions, generate laser G-code, JTEC Phototonics laser tool. All your settings should have been saved from before so all you need to do is click apply. After a few seconds you have your new G-code ready to run on your printer. Hopefully this has given you all of the tools that you need to have a go at this interesting technique. Who knows, you might even fool some people into thinking that you drew some of these things by hand. All the links that you need are in the description. Thanks to Remco for making his amazing guide. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting me. Thank you to you for watching the video. And until next time, happy 2D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.